I mean, you just need to go ahead and block these guys most of the time. But, I mean, I think sometimes I let it go just to entertain myself and, and see where it goes. <laughs> It's usually, you can usually tell it's just going to go uh, south immediately. But um, this guy here says, number one, this guy is like, hi, Beckett boy, I need some money to get through the week. I mean, that's his opening sentence. I've never spoken to this guy, done deals with this guy. And he approaches a business, another business place on eBay with that as his, his opening sentence. And he follows with, I have decided to try and sell some of my cards. Would you be interested in buying them to help me out, please? As you can see there, there's a reply and a reply with offer because he's coming in off one of my listings. And I, I didn't, I just ignored him. I counted with an offer. I think I've got that card listed. I had that card listed at about 150 bucks. And I, count, I hit him with an offer for like 120 and that's it. He then follows up. A couple of days later with a Beckett boy and a question mark to which I hit him with another offer, the exact same offer again, because you can, you can reply with offers when people message you off of a, a one of your listings. So I just kept going with it. I thought, you know what? I don't need to respond to this. This is just absolute shit. You know, these are the sort of idiots that are out there, you know, anyway. Then he just sends me a picture, just a picture. Nothing else, a picture, two pictures of just his cards, random cards, stuff that I would no interest in buying whatsoever. I never, I usually never buy graded. I always buy raw and then get graded because that's how you make money, uh, not the other way around. And I just, I just reply back to him, go back to Facebook champ, you know, because that's where all the, all the bullshit happens is on Facebook. I, I don't use Facebook. I only use eBay because that's where uh, the serious card sellers operate on and those who are there know that. Um, and then he sends back, I don't have Facebook champ, I don't trust Mark Zuckerberg. I'm just like, all right, mate, I'm not, I'm not even gonna, see you later. I don't remember if I blocked that guy and I think I left it open just in case he purchased that card. I'm just like, I'm, if I gotta take money off this guy, but then I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, my block list is massive, so usually, uh, you know, five years ago, I would have just opened up and blocked that guy immediately without without dealing with him whatsoever. Um, moving on, so yeah, I've always been um, talking up vintage AFL, the '70s stuff. Um, there's a there's a wouldn't say an over the top strong market. It's a slow sell, but you can you can it's rare. So you you might find a card, but there's only one out there. And I saw an opportunity. And I took, I took a whole cards off the. I took a whole lot of cards off the market. Um, there was uh, two Mick Malthouses, two Lee Matthews, and two Michael Tucks. They were the only ones available. I don't think they're still there. I took them all, graded them, got them at a really good deal. And at that point, once they're off the market, you, you control the price since you're the only one that has them at that point. So they become rare. And it's literally a day, there must be people that watch when these things happen or whatever it might come down to, save searches or whatever. I get all the, I got bombarded the second that they came back from the grader and I had them up on eBay. Uh, I listed them at, I think, around 300 each. Um, and <laughs> this guy's come back and said, 299.99 for this card, you can't be serious. Well, no, no, I cannot be serious. 299 might be a bit cheap. And he wasn't the only one. There was about three or four of these guys that were just coming at me over a few weeks about how I titled the cards and the pricing. And uh, all I said back to him was, was, hi, mate, thank you for your kind feedback. And he just put 299 with smiley faces and then no problem at all. The funny part was... About a week later or two weeks later, I increased the price on those cards and one I put the Lee Matthews at nearly $500 and it sold and it wasn't even an offer. 
guy paid it. Here it is. Yeah, I always have my listings are all public, so you can you can see it for audit purposes. Um, and and boom. So I was more than happy to contact him and the other guy that told me I needed to take my listings down with screenshots. And then the t one of them blocked me. I'm pretty sure because he just didn't reply. He was so mad. That that guy there that was laughing actually was very shocked, but amazed that I was able to make sales at such high prices and uh you just gotta understand the market and how it works it's um once you have something that you're the only one that has that then you can control how much that those things get sold by so how much they how much they sell for it's that simple I my greg chapel rookie card 1974 the only one available uh, i have all three of them that have been listed for, since the last probably 18 months and this one graded an eight and that's obviously if anyone sent any cards into cga lately it's hard to get good grades this one came back an eight i thought wow that's pretty cool so up it goes and within the first day the guy says hi love your card i watched greg make his debut in 70 71 series four years before this one i, I knew where it was going straight away i know how the next dialogue is going to play out blah, blah, blah. That's not his rookie card. That's not this and that's not that. I just knew. And I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. So I send back, hi there. Yeah, it's a beauty. He was a great player. And he sends back, he sends fabulous, but not his rookie year. And like I said, I, I knew it, where it was going. Uh, and I said, no, it's not, but it's his first card of his, if I remember correctly. Similar to Michael Jordan, 86 is his rookie card. 86 is not his rookie season. So I was just letting that guy know. I don't make the rules, but I just play by them. So it's simple as that. Uh, I've argued thick and thin that the Michael Jordan rookie card is actually the, the 1984 star. But whatever. People just don't want to even hear that. They'll, nope, it's 86. I'm like, All right, bro, it's 86, whatever. It's not. It's 84 star. I still say that now. His rookie card is the 1984-85 star. Um, to me, I think that's a much rarer card too. So if I was to actually choose one, I would definitely choose the 84 star over the 86 flare. Uh, and this was one of the other haters that really, this guy was so triggered, so very, very triggered. And I uh, shared this discussion with uh, one of my colleagues, Mark, who thought it was absolutely hilarious and still... Still gives me the sophomore spiel. Uh, I know you're going to be watching this, Mark. This is pretty funny. But, um, yeah, <laughs> this guy had it listed as the Scanlon's. Well, first I had him listed as rookie cards. And there was another guy that sent me messages. Couldn't dig him up. I don't know where they went. A whole another guy sent messages saying, hi, take these cards down then or rename them. They're not rookies. I'm like, all right, bro, they're not. Uh, I couldn't find any other cards prior to the Malthouse. I felt it was his rookie card. The uh, Lee Matthews and the Michael Tuck, they did have previous cards. So what I did was renamed all of them to sophomore. Now, this, this triggered people beyond belief. This, this sophomore word, it is just... Um, a bomb went off in this guy's head. I'm going to show you the conversation that that ensued and this guy just he could not deal with it whatsoever and he was trying to articulate points that i just did not give two fucks about putting it frankly um and that was that was it and i let him know that i don't care um and i also sent him screenshots of the final sales that were hundreds of dollars and he just, I'm pretty sure this guy blocked me. He couldn't, couldn't handle. I was sending him offers too on top of that because every time he was replying to it, it would give me a, it would give me a, a, an extra chance because he was um, messaging me off the listing. So every time you do that, you get a chance to send the person who messaged you an offer. So I just kept spamming him with offers as well, uh, hoping he would take them, but he didn't, which is pretty funny. So he opens up with, Hi, just wondering what makes this rare slash more expensive than other versions. And I'm like, other versions? It's a fucking vintage AFL card. There's only one. There was no such thing in BFL cards as sophomore cards. Just curious as all. Well, 
you are not just curious. You're triggered as fuck. Let's just put it on the table. You're not just curious. Just curious? So he's lying straight up because he's not just curious. He should be, I'm triggered and curious. That's how he should have put it. There's no other way to, to, to look at it. Um, sophomore, and I'm like, what other versions do you speak of? Because there is no other versions. It's just 78 or whatever. They only had one back in those days. There weren't inserts. There weren't anything. You just had the base card. That's all you had. Um, sophomore, and he replies, sophomore is a term used in US for second year college student. Why well, aren't you a smart cookie? Is it? I didn't know that. Regarding your other listing for Michael Tuck, he actually edited this. The first message he sent said Michael Roach, and I didn't even have any Michael Roach cards up. And Michael Roach was a player that played with Michael Tuck, and he does have cards in that same set. Anyway, I don't know why he said Michael Roach. He edited it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about because he was, he was so triggered that he just lost his shit big time. And this is where he just starts going off in tangents. By the time 78 came around, he had been in the system for seven years. And he's trying to give me a football history lesson. And I'm just like, don't, because I will take you to school on history if that's where we're going. He played in premierships in 76 and 78. Did he? Like, I didn't know who Michael Tuck was, you fucking idiot. How does that make Tuck a sophomore? You can already feel his head exploding, can't you? It's just going boom. This guy is putting himself on a stretcher. I don't even need to do it. He's just like chopping his own head off and saying, see you later. It's advertising like this that is very misleading for people who don't know any better. No, it's not really. And I'll tell you why. I agree that misleading of titles where, where like it's a, a common card, like and and like a Michael Jordan or something, if you say, oh, this is his rookie card and it's like his 10th season, yeah, that's misleading. But like how many Michael Tuck cards are there in the 70s? One every year, right? Starting from about 1975 or something like that or 76. So this would have been his third, second, third or fourth card tops and I called it a sophomore. And that just his head's just gone at that point, just boom. He's not thinking about it the same way I'm thinking about it, and he can't even see it no matter what context I give it to him. That's, that's the difference. So, and, and if you can understand what I'm saying, if it, is, it is misleading. If I was to go, I've got a Nick Dacos rookie card in 10 years' time on that year, and he's already had like 50 or 100 cards, and then I try and sell it. That, that is misleading. When you're doing something like that, when they only have like one or two cards, like, not really, because it's easy just to Google and go, oh, yeah, it's cool. I'm not really misleading people. Um, and I'm happy to dispute that with anybody because if it's misleading, then how, why are so many people buying the Michael Jordan 1986 rookie card? Is that his rookie card? No, he had three or four cards before that. So just think about that, maybe even more than that. Maybe he had a lot more than that because there was a few cards in the star set. So just something to think about. Um, plus, he had college cards as well. So um, that's, you know, and people pay. Um, the Jordan card went for almost 750000 I think one of them might have even cracked a million. So just think about that if you want to talk misleading. Uh, I don't name any of my modern, ultra-modern cards anything that they're not. So vintage, I think you can bend the rules a little bit in terms of how you, you know, uh, list in that way. I never say, it is a 1978 Scanlon's card and that's how I've listed it. I've added in the extra sophomore. If that, if you can't discern that, well, then that's not my problem and you don't, you shouldn't be, even be in sports cards. That's how I look at it. Um, anyway, I counted with, why does a 1986 Michael Jordan Fleer sell for 15000 versus an Isaiah Thomas for 150 in an 86? The reason I said that is because of, he said Michael Roach originally, not Michael Tuck. And he, he, went, he fell back on his sword and then he said, two different players for starters, hardly a comparison. Point being, which you totally ignore, there is no such thing as a sophomore in Australian rules football. Never has been, never will be. 
It's an American term. Sounds like you know nothing about the sport. All right, bro. You listing is a misrepresentation. Nice bit of deflection there from you avoiding my question. I counted with, it's not a deflection. You asked why Michael Roach was listed at $25. Sophomore is a term used in the hobby to describe second, third, fourth year after a player's rookie card. Keep going, champ. He says, nice try, champ. It's not a term used in VFL, AFL collecting. Never has been. It's a US term for basketball, etc. Sophomore is a US term. Never has been used for Australian sport. And I challenge you to provide evidence. Well, Lionel4171, look at all my listings because some of them say sophomore. So it, now it has been used. So there's your evidence, you fuckwit. It was a deflection, as you mentioned, two American basketball players that had nothing to do with Australian sport on the card biz. Whatever. Still, when I say, still waiting, what $25 card? What does Michael Roach have to do with this? Well, at this point, this is when he went back and edited his message. Why are you deflecting points that you brought up? I'm just throwing it back in his face. And then he counters with a whole lot of thing. And I'm just, at this point, I'm just like, mate, you, you know, whatever. And he just keeps saying, the same stupid shit over and over again. I asked you to provide evidence, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't need to provide shit to you. Who the fuck are you? And then I'm like, there is no listings at 25 bucks. That answers that question. It's not my fault. You're extremely triggered. I advise you to study the market before you come at me with silly questions that have zero foundation. And then he just he just keeps going. And it's just big, long paragraphs. I mean, you can read it here. I'm gonna, I'm, I've got it up on the screen. He says, uh, you, can, you can go down and look at the drop-down boxes and blah, blah, blah. Michael Malthouse is there, 25 bucks. And by that time, the, all the Michael Malthouses have been sold out because I listed one so high in price that people were freaking out going, holy shit. That's, that's just what happens when there's only like one or two left and you list high. It forces other people to list high because when the cheap ones get sold, do you know what I mean? It's like reverse marketing. That's what people, you know, you guys need to start doing that sort of thing because if you're trying to make money and you're trying to undercut someone, you're better off overcutting every single time overcutting. Pointless having a discussion with you, you just don't get it. I do get it, actually. I do get it. It's just your points are not valid and I don't need to explain myself to you because you're just a dickhead. Like, that's as simple as that. Sophomore doesn't exist in Australian rules football. Never said it does. It exists in the card market, though. Look at any price of guy listing. You will never see one listed. Mine are listed as it. So that defeats what he's saying right there is actually wrong because look at my, bring up my thing. They're still on there right now to this day. But that's the point, Bowman. Continue with your misleading listings and all the best with selling something that isn't rare. Well, he copped the screenshot of me selling that one for $522. And I got positive feedback and the customer was from the United States. So sophomore works. It hasn't been a discussion by any means. You're in a box about what constitute what's. I am not the end. That's it. That is it. And then he finished off with something and he was clearly good luck selling it. No problem. I did for $500. $200 more than what I originally listed at. And I've sold the other ones as well. So, whatever. But there you have it. That's uh, the most viciousness from, from this one. I thought you might like that. It's quite hilarious, I guess, looking at it from an external point of view. Um, it, it did get a bit heated. I was cool and calm the whole time. I didn't give a fuck. But, um, yeah, some of these guys are just like, and, and you know what? You Sometimes you just got to not give a fuck. You're going you're gonna to upset people. I don't care. And there's going to be more. There is more. There's more. If this happens. You know, people will send you messages going, oh, you, you can't be serious, blah, blah, blah. You just got to go, no, nah, mate, I'm not serious. Price has now doubled. Thank you very much. Sometimes you have to dictate the market if, if you want to succeed. This is how it is. It's just how it is. But uh, anyway, <laughs> if, if you love this, then uh, jump on and smash the like. Let us know in the comments what you think. It's pretty funny, I guess. Um, and if you want a bit of more of this sort of stuff, which is, Something I haven't really done before, but I saw someone else do it and I thought, you know what, I've got some pretty good material on this as well. And I can uh, probably do one of these every few months after I've upset a few more, uh, I wouldn't even call these people customers, just eggheads. But yeah, 
um, just block and block and move on on eBay. I don't want these guys even having anything to do with me. So my listings are still up. So they've obviously reported them, but eBay just went, oh, he's within his rights to list them that way. I'm not doing anything wrong. Anyway, peace out, people.